Okay, so we finally made it to the point where we're going to plot the or uh, plot the airfoil using this push button. So uh, if you go back to the other code from the other video, I'm going to copy that all in here. So I'm going to copy all this up to here. Copy that. I'm going to put it right into the push button here. So what happens if I just run that? Press Control F5. We're all ready. And um, I press plot airfoil, it opens up in a new figure, there's no errors, no nothing, and that's fine, because that literally, this button is just saying, you know, run the code that I essentially I had in this other, in this other file. So, the problem is, though, that it's not using any of our stuff that we, that we put into our GUI. So, one of the things is, uh, one of the reasons is that I'm defining these variables here in the actual function. These should actually be read in from, uh, from the base workspace. So, these things here, if I if I uh, control uh, R these out, and also the plot, um, and I run it again, it runs fine. But when I plot the airfoil, it gives you an error because uh, it doesn't know what type NACA is, then it doesn't know what grid points is, uh, all that fun stuff. So we are going to need to code this up a little bit differently. We can still use the same essential code, but we need to take in the values from the base workspace. Uh, so I'm going to copy. Uh, these evals in over eval ins over from my other file because they're the same. Uh, and you can see that we have the type NACA, AOA, all these other things in here that we need. And those are going to be evaluated in from the base workspace. Um, so the first thing we need to do is, uh, is get this, the M init, P init, T init. And then, uh, let me move some of these around because these are a little bit confusing here. So I'm going to change, i um, going to move this up here so that it's right below these m and it. So I'm getting the actual values of m, p, and t. And then here we have these constants. And one of the things that I had in my other file was that these could be switched. You can, you know, control R, control T to switch them. But we actually want to switch them based off of uh, what the pop t e value was. So if I go in here, I'm just going to say if pop t e is equal to 1, that means we want to use the open trailing edge, so we wanted to use this here, and then else if pop te is equal to two, we wanted to use this. So let me go like this, and then we'll end. So now it'll set the trailing edge a four based off of what we had selected for the trailing edge. So that works fine. Uh, the other one here is the airfoil grid. And I'm using linspace here to give a linear, linearly spaced grid, but based off of our pop grid type that we said here, we could also use a non-uniform. So I'm going to say if pop grid type is equal to 1, then we'll use this. Else if pop grid, grid type is equal to 2, then I'm going to use this other, I'm, I won't explain this here, but it, it essentially groups the grid points closer to the leading edge and the trailing edge, and then there's, they're more spaced out in the middle of the airfoil where the curvature is not as high. Um, I can explain this in a different video, but it's a really simple relationship if you just uh, draw it out. But it uses the uh, trigonometric function cosine to do that grouping. And then I'm going to assign in to the base workspace this x, because those are literally the x points that we're plotting. Okay. Now we have the camber and gradient, and that's all the same. These are the simplified or shortened versions. So I took out all those four, uh, those four loops uh, to simplify this down. And now these look like they aren't being used because we're not actually plotting anything yet. So one thing that I want to do before I do anything is I want to get the uh, x camber line, and this is just the same as the x values. And the reason is I like to plot x, c, and y camber, so x camber and y camber, as opposed to just having an x uh, here. It's just for my purposes. And then I also want to assign the base, uh, let's see, I'll just write this out, assign in the base for saving later. So I'm going to assign the x upper, y upper, x lower, y lower as well. And this, we don't need to see me write this, so I'll just copy this from my other file. And now those, uh, so without actually plotting anything, these will be, uh, if I run this, you can see them in the base workspace when I push this button. You can see they pop up here. We have the x upper, y upper, x lower, y lower, and then we have x assigned in here. Okay, so what we want to do now is 
first. So this is for plotting now, because when we push this button, we want it to plot it. So the first thing I want to do is select the correct plot. And that, I'm just going to select the handles.plot airfoil, like that. And I'm not going to change the, I'm not going to uh, define the title on the X label and the Y label because we did that up uh, when we initialized the GUI before it actually shows up. So now this is plot the airfoil. And this, there's a little bit of code here, and it's just because uh, we need to plot based off of what kind of uh, plot we decided to use. So first things first. Uh, actually, we you know we do need these labels here because I clear the axis every time so that the airfoil whoops so that the airfoil doesn't show up uh, plotted on top of itself when you change some parameters. So you do need to put this in here so that these labels show up every single time. So now in the plot the airfoil. So I'm going to say remember first we need to say only plot it if the flag plot is equal to one else I'm not going to do anything. So in here, so this is if we are able to plot, the first thing I want to do is I want to clear the axis. The second thing I want to do is I want to hold on and I want to put the grid on. And then I also want to make the axis equal. And that was described later or in the other video why you want the axis to be equal. So the first thing is if I want to plot it as a line, so if the pop plot as is equal to one, then we're going to plot the upper. We're going to call that plot, uh, plot u. And we're going to plot the x upper, y upper, and we're going to plot it as a black line, like that. Then we're going to plot the lower in the similar sense, xl, yl, and we'll plot that as a black line as well. And then I need another if statement here because if I'm going to plot the camber line, then it'll be based off of this radio show camber. If that's equal to 1, then I'm going to plot the camber as x camber, y camber, and I'll plot that as a red line. And, and then we want this else if statement for pop, oops, <laughs> pop plot as is equal to two. And then we also want another else if pop plot as is equal to three. And then we can end that. So now if I copy this in here and in here, then we can change this to plotting instead of a line. We can plot it with circles like this. We plot everything with circles and then here. If we want to plot with dots, we'll put a period here to plot it with dots. Okay. And then, uh, let's see what happens when we run that. We can see that the airfoil is plotted for a 0012. If I show the camber line, you can see it's shown in red. So then if I change this to a 2412, I'll take out the camber line. You can see it changes it. I'll put in the camber line again. You can see the camber line it is showing some curvature to the airfoil. A big one is a 6409. You can see that it's highly cambered, and you can see that it's plotting it nicely. Uh, the other thing that I can do here is I can put it to circle, and now you can see it's plotted with circles. Uh, if I take that out, and it's a little bit easier to see with dots, then you can see it here. Let me change this down to like 25 data points. You can see it's very sparse here. And now I'm going to change this to non-uniform, and you'll see them cluster towards the leading edge and the trailing edge, so it, it allows you to define the leading edge and the trailing edge a little bit better than if you're using uniform. So you can use less data points to get a better description. Um, so if we say like 50 points, and then we'll do non-uniform, it clusters them towards the front and the, uh, the front and the back. If I do close, let me switch this to, we'll keep that non-uniform, I'll switch this to line again. And then if I switch this to closed, you can see at the trailing edge it closes up. It's a little hard to see because I didn't put a zoom feature on here yet. But if you switch it to open, you can see that it opens it up and you have a finite thickness trailing edge. And you can see that once we save out the uh, out the data, and that'll be in the, in the next video. Uh, so the other thing that I want to do in this video here uh, is to add in the rotation. So we want a rotation axis. There are three things that we want to specify when we rotate. One of them is the axis of rotation. The next one is the angle of rotation. And the third one is the origin. So let me just look at my file. And if we go up to here, I'm going to specify uh, the rotation axis. So I'm going to get the rotation axis here. And I'm going to specify that I'm going to rotate about quarter chord. And that's just my preference. So I'm going to say X. I just press Alt. If I press X. And then QC, so quarter chord, is equal to 0.25 because our airfoil goes from 0 to 1, so the quarter of the chord is 0.25. The Y of the quarter chord that I'm going to rotate about is just going to be 0. 
Okay, now we need to have these rotation parameters. And in here, I want to specify the three things that I mentioned. I want to specify the axis of rotation. The axis of rotation is defined with these x, y, z coordinate parameters. So I'm going to set it as 0, 0, 1. And that means that we're rotating about the z axis. And the z axis is coming out of the plane, which makes sense because we want to rotate the, act, the airfoil in the actual plot plane so that we're rotating about the z axis. Then the origin of this rotation is going to be about the x quarter chord, the y quarter chord, and uh, the zero and the z. And then the theta of rotation is just going to be uh, the uh, the angle, the negative angle of attack. And this, I put the negative because that's just how the rotation works. Uh, is that it's it's negative of what you think would happen to the airfoil uh, based off of the angle of attack that you put in um, to the actual GUI. So that's the angle of attack in degrees. Okay, so then in here, so where do we put that in here? We've plotted, so you'll see the reason that I use these uh, these plot U, plot L, plot C, and that's because we need to rotate them after we've plotted them. So if I go down to here after the else if, uh, after this, well, let me plot this here, uh, or put this in here, else if, just so you can see, flag plot is equal to zero. Then we, in here, let me just say we do nothing. Okay, so then after we've plotted all of these, so this end is based off of this if here. So after we do this, we want to rotate. So I use a rotate command. I'm going to rotate the plot U around the axis of rotation with a theta rotation angle around the origin that we specified. So that's rotating the upper surface or the upper airfoil surface. We want to do the same thing for the lower axis of rotation, theta rotation origin. And we also want to do the same thing for the camber line, but we only want to do it if the actual camber line is being shown, because otherwise this won't exist if it's not. So radio, if the radio show camber is equal to 1, then we want to rotate plot C around the axis of rotation for a certain angle, theta rotate, about the origin. Like that, it can end. Okay, so now I can run this. I'm going to plot this, and you can see the airfoil show up. I'm going to change this to a 2412, so you can see some camber. Plot the camber line. Now, if I switch this to a 15 degree angle of attack, you can see it rotates it. It'll, it rotates it about the quarter chord point. It's a little easier to see in a 0012 because of the quarter chord. Uh, you see the error message showed up. That was good. Um, because the camber line is a straight line, so you can see it's actually rotating about at 0.25. It's rotating about this point right here. And this is just for looks. This doesn't do anything. Um, other than just physically rotate the airfoil. So you don't actually need this in the program, but I thought it was fun to put it in. And again, you can see if I put in like a negative 10, boom, it goes down uh, to a negative angle of attack. Okay, and the last thing I want to do in this video before I stop this, even though this has been a pretty long video, the last thing I want to do is I want to, now that we've plotted it, I want to enable data saving. So I'm going to set the handles dot push save data enable, I'm going to set it to on. So you can see here when we start it up, save data is not enabled. Once I plot it, save data is enabled, and now we can code in the next video. I will do the final final video. I'll code this save data up so that we can see uh, the data file that it will output. So thanks for sticking around for this long, and stick uh, around for the next video too. Thanks.